and Medical Services of Fiji, Excellency Dr. Quen Kwan Ryu, Commissioner of Statistics Korea, Excellency Dr. Sanong Tongsana, Deputy Minister of Health, Lao PDR, Excellency Dr. Dennis Mapa, Undersecretary, National Statistician and Civil Register of the Philippines, Excellency Dr. Punki Sumadi, Deputy Minister for Population of Manpower Bapanas, Indonesia, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, I'm delighted to welcome you to this Ministerial Roundtable on Pandemics, People and Preparedness, Ministerial Roundtable on Civil Registration and Vital Statistics, COVID-19 and Health. The pandemic has led to tremendous challenges and opportunities for CRVS systems, especially related to the recording of deaths and calls for collective efforts to shape the future landscape of health information to support sustainable development. The most fundamental question is, how many people have actually died from COVID-19 cannot yet be answered in many countries in the region. Indeed, it may take some time before we know the answer. And in some countries, we may never know. In particular, the most vulnerable and marginalized population, those often most at risk of COVID-19, may never have their deaths counted. A well-functioning CRVS system is necessary to provide an answer to this question. However, during a public health emergency, such as COVID-19, even a well-functioning CRVS system is faced with challenges of backlogs in death registration and diagnostic uncertainties. This roundtable will discuss country experiences in responding to the challenges caused by the pandemic while recognizing that it has also presented an opportunity for CRVS system strengthening due to the attention now given to mortality statistics. Ministers will also be invited to discuss how to transform CRVS systems to ensure preparedness for the next health emergency or pandemic. I hope that all participants will find this discussion useful as we enter the second half of the Asia-Pacific CRPS decade. Given the scope of the challenges we are facing, there are countless issues that need addressing. I hope today's roundtable can provide us with some of these answers and real solutions to these problems. I'm delighted that we have such esteemed participation by ministers in this event, highlighting the importance accorded to CRVS. And I thank our moderator, Dr. Philip Settel, Vice President of Vital Strategies, for kindly agreeing to moderate this event. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm confident this event will share valuable approaches and good practices on improving CRVS system to be more resilient for future crisis and pandemic and encourage innovative ways to achieve this. I look forward to the rich discussion today. Thank you very much. Honorable Excellencies, distinguished guests, Welcome to the Ministerial Roundtable on Pandemics, People, and Preparedness, a Ministerial Roundtable on Civil Registration and Vital Statistics, COVID-19, and Health. In this session, we will hear from an esteemed panel of ministers, from whom we will invite two rounds of comment, followed, time permitting, by a moderated discussion and a brief set of closing statements. My name is Philip Settle and I direct the Civil Registration and Vital Statistics Program at Vital Strategies, an implementing partner in the Bloomberg Philanthropies Data for Health Initiative, in which SCAP is also a partner. I would now like to briefly introduce our panel of ministers and then invite our first guest to present his remarks. I'm told this session cannot run over time, so I will, will respectfully request our panelists to please limit remarks to three minutes and closing statements to one to two minutes. With us today, we are honored to welcome 
Dr. Jamesu Tudravu, who is the Chief Medical Advisor of Fiji and here to represent the Honorable Dr. Ifremi Wakai Nabete, Minister, Ministry of Health and Medical Services of Fiji, who has had to attend to other urgent affairs. We're also joined by His Excellency Dr. Punki Sumadi, Deputy Minister for Population and Manpower of Bapinas, Indonesia. Dr. Sumadi has a PhD in economics from the University of Illinois. He has held many senior positions in the Indonesian government, reaching his current role in 2017. We are pleased to welcome His Excellency, Dr. Kian Kwan Ryu, Commissioner Statistics Korea, Republic of Korea, also who has a PhD in economics, in his case from Stanford University. He previously worked as an academic for 35 years in both the US and the Republic of Korea before recently taking up his role as the 18th Commissioner of Statistics Korea. We are joined by His Excellency Dr. Sanong Tong Sana, Deputy Minister, Ministry of Health, Lao PDR. Dr. Thong Sana oversees the Department of Hygiene and Health and Health Promotion, Department of Communicable Disease Control, and Department of Health Care. He is a medical doctor specializing in cardiology. Prior to his current post, he was director of Mitafab Hospital in Vientiane. His Excellency, to round out our panel, Dr. Claire Dennis Mapa, Under Secretary, National Statistician and Civil Registrar, <clears throat> Philippine Statistics Authority, the Philippines also joins us. Dr. Mapa has a PhD in economics from the University of the Philippines. He previously served as Dean of the University of the Philippine School of Statistics, as well as President of the Philippine Statistics Association, taking up his current post in 2019. Welcome to such an excellent panel of esteemed ministers. The first question to which we have invited comment is as follows. How can we respond to the ongoing challenges posed by the pandemic while leveraging the spotlight on mortality statistics to ensure sustainable capacity strengthening? Again, we kindly ask our speakers to limit remarks to three minutes. And I will ask uh, Dr. Tudravu if you would please start us off with your remarks. The Honorable uh, Moderator, distinguished members of uh, this forum, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I firstly bring salutations and best well wishes from the Honorable Minister, Dr. Ifremi on this occasion. Allow me to begin by conveying Fiji's deepest condolences to all member states for losses you have suffered during this pandemic. Fiji has also suffered much from the pandemic, but one of our brightest light of hope was achieved two days ago when we reached 90% full vaccination against COVID-19 for our target population. The scale and impact of the COVID-19 pandemic also challenged the health support systems and processes such as health information management and civil registration. In Fiji, all births and deaths are registered. The processes of births and deaths faced obstacles during the pandemic and took time and effort to build into a simulate, seamless facilitated process. During the pandemic, WHO had updated and released the specific ICD-10 coding for pandemic-related events. This was shared to our mortality data management unit and awareness done for clinicians through training and during the daily morning briefing on mortalities. As a result, SOPs on mortality certification and data management were quickly developed and endorsed by our COVID-19 National Task Force on COVID-19 mortality to accommodate the pre-existing policies and streamline the processes. We established a specific process for COVID-19 mortality certification, which was initiated at the beginning of the pandemic with the forensics unit, private sectors, and other stakeholders to gain, cons to gain consensus and ensure that each case was attended to in an efficient manner. This ensured that delays were minimized in the processes, processing of disease and the certification 
of the disease was organized around the testing of COVID-19, and there was sufficient verbal history to confirm causation of its, of its deaths. Verbal autopsies came to the fore for us in the Ministry of Health, from conducting only a handful each year to hundreds in a span of less than 10 months. About 57 deaths in Fiji uh, due to COVID-19 were outside the hospital with, li with little medical history, and more than 80% died within 24 hours of admission into a hospital. We need to build capacity of the relevant health workforce to be able to effectively and efficiently conducting, conduct certification of deaths during a pandemic. In our response, a series of webinars were conducted, specifically targeting clinicians to help with their practice and adjust to new guidelines. A training on MCDC was facilitated by experts from the University of Queensland and the Australian Bureau of Statistics to support our teams. The pandemic also highlighted the need for integrated information systems that facilitate the sharing and protection of health information. For Fiji, we, have, we had established a system that facilitates laboratory testing and the release of results to patients. And there is a need to integrate this information system and other information systems developed as part of the pandemic response with existing health information system and statistic systems. Preparedness should include integrating relevant information systems for efficient sharing and processing of information that impacts policies and decision making. I thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much, Dr. Tudravu. May I please invite the Honorable Deputy Minister Sumadi from Indonesia to present your response to this first question. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Seto. Um, excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in responding to the questions, actually, Indonesia have been uh, uh, having the regime of uh, active reporting of their civil registration. People are expected to actively report any population related activities. However, we have not reached people's response in doing so as expected. Especially during the pandemics, things get worse. Access to service centers is very limited. So what we have been doing in uh, dealing with the situation of civil registration during this uh, uh, difficult pandemic situation, we have two approach. First, digital transformation and innovation. So we have seen many local governments, such as in city of Yogyakarta and Pariaman, launch civil registry applications so that people can register birth death, divorce, change of address, etc. People can print all documents except the ID card themselves. So it's a PDF file with special QR code for authentication. This initiative actually provides sometimes of uh, uh, difficulties by the uh, central command of the civil registrations office. However, the certain registration office such as legalizing may be temporarily delayed, but Registration of birth, death, stillbirth, and recording of causes of death should continue as priority. So we have developed close co collaboration as well with hospitals, health centers to our COVID-19 Central Command and the Center of Civil Registrations Office for doing the uh, in improvement of the accessibility of the people for the civil registration. And the innovation simplifies and improves the standard procedure of civil registration. The second approach that we introduce also that, especially in the areas where internet connection is still scarce, local governments assign certified community members as civil register. In the case of the uh, region of Bantaeng, for example, or Bandar Maria and Lombok Islands, actually, this is actually the activities that we ask the local community members to actively approach each uh, household to identify whether there are needs of civil registry activities that they can register. So actually now we are in the process of making these initiatives into national policies in civil registration procedures. So um, uh, discussions among cabinet members are actually ongoing and hopefully within the next few two semesters, we will be able to launch that kind of improvement in the policy. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, uh, Honorable Deputy Minister. May I please invite the Honorable Commissioner Ryu, Commissioner of Statistics Korea, Republic of Korea, to deliver his response to our first question. I'm very glad to uh, meet you all, uh, even though it's online. The Korean government is producing comprehensive and timely vital statistics in collaboration with the local governments. In Korea, every resident's identity is registered in the electronic resident registration system in which each individual is given a unique identification number. Korea's resident registration system was first implemented back in 1962. Births, deaths, marriages, and divorces, among other things, are recorded into the Supreme Court's electronic family relations registration system and also into our COSTES vital statistics survey system. Vital statistics was first implemented back in 1970 in alignment with the family relations registration system, which itself was developed based on the resident registration system. Local governments began inputting the reported registration information into the vital statistics system in 1997. Cause of death statistics is also produced by acquiring death report, reports and death certificates through the vital statistics survey system. During the COVID-19 period, we COSTAT provides provisional weekly death counts by gender, age, and region to identify the occurrence of excess deaths associated with this pandemic. In Korea, excess deaths associated with COVID-19 are not prominent except for quite aged people. In Korea, vital statistics was produced without disruption, even among COVID-19. This is attributed to the nation's vital statistics production system. A well-functioning vital statistics system is critical in performing impact analysis on causes of deaths and excess deaths in the event of a pandemic crisis. Additionally, advanced CRVS systems should be developed to this end. This highlights the need for collective efforts to be made by governments and international organizations to establish a sound CRVS system. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable, De uh, Honorable Commissioner. I would like now to invite Honorable Deputy Minister Dongsana Lao PDR to present remarks in respect to the first question. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Dongsana. Thank you, Moderator, Mr. Philip Zetter, Dr. Amanda Stelias, Alicia Banner. Executive Secretary of UNESCO, Excellency Ministers, Vice Minister, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your giving this opportunity to share our experience during this challenging time in relation to registration, birth, and death, and migration. Regarding the issue raised by moderator, how can we respond to the ongoing challenges posed by the pandemic? by leveraging spotlight on mortality statistics as to ensure sustainable capacity strengthening, I would like to share our experience like this. Why allow PDR means to contain wide-scale community transmission of COVID-19 for over a year? With the influx of returning migrant workers, we started seeing an upsurge of cases. This triggered the current outbreak, which we are yet to bring under control. Our first challenge here was not knowing how many Lao migrant workers were in neighboring countries and were ready to return to effectively plan our health intervention. Being a landlocked country, there is a lot of informal movement between boundaries and registration movement is big. This is certainly a gap that was identified during the pandemic earlier this year, 
and COVID-19 pandemic should be seen as an opportunity for regional strengthening of better border control, including registration. Talking about birth and death registration in Lao PDR, the system still requires significant strengthening while the registration system within villages through the family book is very strong. This information is yet to be used to its fullest potential to strengthen CRVAs. In case of death, majority of deaths take place outside health facilities and mostly at home. Only around 7% of all deaths occur in health facilities. And even for this small proportion of deaths, we do not have reliable cause of death statistics. However, as we all know, as can reach community transmission level of COVID-19, it is essential to measure excessive mortality in the community for improved surveillance. This is indeed an opportune time for Ministry of Health to work more closely with the Ministry of Home Affairs to cross these long existing gaps. As first step toward this, the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Home Affairs signed a data sharing agreement in March this year. Our village chief usually know when a death occur within the community and establishing a system to capture this vital information. This vital information is key with the last statistic bureau is possible for compiling the data through the village statistics and will be linked to the registration system of the Ministry of Health and Ministry of Home Affairs in the future. We are now working towards establishing a responsive system to capture data on death right from the village level and have them share across an electronic, an electronic platform across both ministries, starting from Vientiane Capital. We are adopting a bottom-up approach after years of making slow progress from a top to bottom approach to that notification. Ministries of Health are now working more closely with the communities they serve in order to enhance COVID-19 surveillance, and this should be seen as an opportunity to strengthen death notification and registration. In the case of birth, nearly 55% of births were registered by Minister of Home Affairs in 2020. However, over 70% of, of on births take place in health facility, and by sharing birth not notification data, from Ministry of Health to Ministry of Home Affairs, the births could be could only be registered. The two ministries, through the new MOU arrange, arrangement, are working toward this. Again, we have noted a significant increase in the number of births in healthcare facility during the COVID-19 pandemic, and we do not have significant evidence to suggest if there was also an increase in home birth due to poorer accessibility, particularly during the lockdown. This is extremely important for the Ministry of Health to know, to shape its strategy to increase access to maternal and child health, particularly in to remote and hard to reach communities. The Ministry of Health is working toward, together with the Ministry of Home Affairs, again, to try and bridge the gap co collectively. Thank you, Moderator. Thank you so much. And uh, to round out our first set of responses to question one, may I please invite the Honorable Undersecretary Mapa of the Philippines to uh, present. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Philip. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. The pandemic challenge the Philippine Statistics Authority to generate real-time death statistics as this become a matter of urgency. And the Philippine Statistics Authority responded to this call. The data collected from our civil registry documents from the local civil registrar offices around the country was indispensable 
to the formulation of policies and decision making. Upon the request of our National Planning Office, the National Economic Development Authority, and the Interagency Task Force on the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, the mechanism on the submission of daily updates of civil registry documents and data files began earnestly on May 22, 2020. Likewise, the submission of daily updates on counts of 2020 deaths by month of occurrence and by city or municipality based on the data files submitted by our provincial offices began a month after in June 13, 2020 until September 23, 2020. It became a weekly submission from October 2, 2020 onwards. The timely release of the weekly updates on death statistics to our Ministry of Health was made possible with the intensified collaboration between the units of the Philippine Statistics Authority, supported by additional manpower and training provided to our technical staff, particularly on the right coding of causes of deaths. These are all inputs in the timely release of death statistics and very important in the monitoring of the COVID-19 mortality in our country. Putting in place a reporting mechanism for debt statistics became a priority and at the same time a challenge in the interest of producing official data coming from the statistical authority of the country. With the proliferation of unofficial statistics coming from various sources, the National Statistics Office needs to keep up with the challenge of producing quality data. The vision is to go beyond producing the data as the current health crisis necessitates, but to continue an institutional partnership that will ensure that quality statistical data is generated regardless of pandemic or not. The vision goes even further with the goal of setting information technology enabled and seamless handling of data at the local level. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. That brings us to the end of the first set of remarks. The second question we have posed to our panel is as follows. What can governments and the international community do to productively transform CRVS systems to ensure preparedness for the next health emergency or pandemic, in particular, for countries with the least capacity. Let's go around again now for remarks to this important matter. Dr. Tudravu, may I please invite you to take the floor? Thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator. The WHO six building blocks for health systems provides a framework for developing and transforming CRES systems for the least developed countries. Partners in, in the international community can assist governments to digitalize the MCDC process for medical practitioners and other health workers who initiate the death certification process. This will help improve efficiency in the registration and reduce the number of errors and challenges associated with paper-based documentation and certificates. Governments and state authorities can establish national MCDC uh, policies that mandate the training of relevant health workers in medical costs of death classification as a component of undergraduate or postgraduate training in healthcare disciplines. This knowledge can then be further strengthened with additional courses of training when practitioners are out in their field of practice. Partners can assist health systems in establishing well-defined processes of information flow from the certification of death at the health department through to recording of deaths by health information systems, and ultimately to registration of deaths at the Ministry of Justice. This can be enhanced with the integration of appropriate health information systems 
vaccination registration systems, and BDM systems. This will greatly assist statisticians and epidemiologists in accurately analyzing the impact of the pandemic and produce credible information that guide policymakers. Partners and funders can assist least developed countries in targeting funding support towards establishing resilient information system and CRVS systems that can support the current roles and processes in a non-pandemic situation and can also step up in functionality in response to a pandemic. The resilience is not only in digital resilience, but also physical resilience to environmental factors. Our, and our example in Fiji has been that, that we battled for devastating tropical cyclones in the midst of responding to the crippling health and non-health impact of the pandemic. Lastly, funders and partners can assist developing countries in extending and improving access to the population to health information and CRVS information they need. For example, a, strength, a strengthened birth notification process that allows greater access to birth certificates for the people and a death registration system that reliably registers all deaths and allow ready access to death certificates for their relatives. Funders and partners can also assist in establishing monitoring and evaluation processes that support the ongoing improvement of the death registration process. This will ensure that the population have access to the information that they need and no one is left behind. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Dr. Tudravu. May I please now turn the floor over to Honorable Deputy Minister Sumadi of Indonesia. Dr. Sumadi, I believe you're on mute. Excuse me. Uh, thank you, Mr. Seto. Since the start of pandemics, the government of Indonesia launched an omnibus law that allows the government to deal with the pandemic. The law allows us to increase our deficit budget funding that previously limits our budget deficit up to 3% of our GDP. With this budget flexibility, we have been able to provide the necessary measures in dealing with the emergency situation. So we have refocused our budget that we have extremely limited fiscal space for civil registry in this instance. So this is the room of collaboration we have created with international community. So we ask them to participate and work with us. And then we also work with local governments on improving the access of civil registry and vital statistics services. We deployed our experts to the fields to really understand what is actually the, the, the current situation, what actually limit them to report the civil registry uh, activities to the central government, central command. So the innovation I briefly described were some of the results. Governments share information of these initiatives to international development partners. And then we also need to understand the pros and cons of these initiatives and work on strategies for improvements. For example, how we register offline and upload the recorded data when internet action is uh, unavailable. How the central administrator verifies the data, etc. Then make good documents. So setting up knowledge sharing strategies, including training staff, so make them experienced to, to uh, the least developed countries is actually one of the initiatives that I would propose. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sumadi. May we please turn now to Honorable Commissioner Ryu, Republic of Korea. COVID-19 raises the need for the entire global community to share the lessons learned from the pandemic to prepare for future crisis. In responding to the pandemic for the past two years, our COSTEP became keenly aware of the importance of providing relevant 
and timely statistics on the basis of administrative data, engaging in inter-organizational cooperation and data sharing to this end, and establishing institutional and te technical frameworks. COSTAD has pro announced data paradigm shifts in terms of value, production, and service to compile more data in a safer manner to produce statistics without face-to-face -face contact and to provide users with improved access to several statistics. To this end, COSTAD is developing a so-called K-statistics system to securely collect, link, and utilize statistical data from different governmental organizations using the latest encryption technology, together with resident, family, and business registers. As I said, Korea has already been producing vital statistics since 1970 based on birth, death, marriage, and divorce reports that are linked with the Supreme Court's family relations registration system. COSTED is very willing to cooperate with the international community to share our years of experience, knowledge, and very willing to provide technical assistance. COSTAD has signed an MOU with the UNFPA to jointly respond to the issues of low fertility and aging society, and is currently assisting developing countries with capacity building for demographic statistics. This would serve as a channel through which COSTAD provides assistance in relation to CRVS. Of course, this would require discussion with UNFPA. Additionally, COSTAD is undertaking ODA projects to help developing countries with statistical capacity building. This could serve as another channel to support less developed countries in building their CRVS system. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Ryu. May I now invite Honorable Deputy Minister Thong Sana Lao PDR to take the floor. Thank you, Mr. Sita, our moderator. Regarding the second issue raised by our moderator, I would like to share our opinion like this. Hence, we reiterate that birth, death, and migration registration data is fundamental for improved surveillance and for a better preparedness and response to health emergencies. We need to invest in technology to strengthen surveillance. We have seen so much of investment going into developing software applications for contact trace, tracing and tracking population movement. However, it's a pity that we are still talking about tracking vital events just as births and deaths. We need to invite wisely such fundamental systems and leverage on technologies available and seamlessly share vital information across different stakeholders. COVID-19 pandemic has created opportunities for different stakeholders to work more closely together and to adopt a bottom-up approach to notification. For instance, through multi-sources several initiatives, Ministry of Health is now working and respond to uh, Ministry of Health is now working more closely with provincial, district, and village authorities to improve surveillance and respond to COVID-19 pandemic. And we are capitalizing on these new, new form links to improve notification and legislation. We request development partners to support us on this endeavor. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, sir. And to finish up our second round of comments, may I invite Honorable Undersecretary Mop of the Philippines to share thoughts. Thank you. On the second issue uh, raised, the importance of capacity building activities cannot be understated. Development partners are an excellent source of best practices and innovation through the sharing of expertise and experiences. 
In the case of the Philippines, the Philippine Statistics Authority collaborated and benefited with our engagement with the vital strategies and the University of Billborn to improve the timeliness, completeness, and accuracy of vital statistics. Training on the analysis of causes of national deaths for action or anaconda has been undertaken to improve the quality of our vital statistics data. Anaconda is a tool for checking the quality of mortality data through a step-by-step -step approach to enable users to quickly conduct a comprehensive review of the mortality levels and causes of death. This tool has already been institutionalized in our country since 2016 to check the quality of the causes of death data. Capacity building activities should not be limited to external resource persons. We can also utilize multi-sectoral capacity building even within the national context. In the Philippines, the Philippine Statistics Authority continues to partner with our Ministry of Health in conducting more trainings, seminars, and workshops to improve the quality of the causes of deaths and to reduce into half our baseline target of 0 0.9 on the ill-defined causes of registered deaths by the health facilities. There should also be efforts towards building the capacity of the partners, especially at the sub-national level, where most of our civil registration documents emanate. We can train our medical records officers and local health officers in the proper accomplishment of death certificates, including the causes of death certification and on the International Statistical Classification of Disease and Related Health Problems, or ICD-10. We can also ramp up the efforts to use ICT to address interoperability and to hasten transmission of documents and crafting of citizen-centric policies and setting up satellite offices, uh, not uh, especially in remote areas, to make civil registration services accessible and affordable. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much, Honorable Secretary, for helping us wrap up the panelist statement portion of this session. Happily, we have time for some discussion. And let's take a few minutes to consider some of the issues that have been raised in the remarks that we have just heard. To get us rolling, I'd like to pose the following question and invite any of the panelists who wishes to do so to, to comment. Uh, one of the key issues that has come out is the role of technology and digitization in the establishment and improvement of CRVS systems capable of keeping up with the informational demands of an evolving health emergency. What advice would you provide to countries that are on the beginning stages of that journey of digitization to help them uh, make the path perhaps a bit easier. I will open the floor, please, to anyone who wishes to uh, make remarks. Okay, uh, let me make a few comments. Uh, to prepare CLV's VIE system in a well-functioning way, uh, faced with a crisis like COVID-19, I think basically we need two preparations. One is technological, so well-developed ICT infrastructure to facilitate fast and timely communications among department among different information sources. And the second is a kind of legal institutional framework. Uh, if I repeat our Korea's experience. We have set up legal institutional framework back in 1962, quite early, such that every bus can be recorded into governmental CLVA system. That was the beginning of this legal framework. And the second is obviously information technology. So the mix of these two infrastructure is very important. One institutional, the other one is technological. And then to 
uh, get benefit out of these two infrastructures, obviously we need training. We need people who can uh, work in both aspects of uh, these necessary conditions. And uh, as I mentioned, Korea is quite willing to provide training and other assistance if needed. Thank you. Thank you, sir. May I invite any of the other panelists to speak? Dr. Sumadi. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, actually, what we have learned so far that actually we need to deploy IT experts during this critical situation uh, to develop simple and easy to use CRVS application with low bandwidth uh, technology because Indonesia is very wide, especially in the eastern part of Indonesia. There are signal problems, actually. So it is very helpful for them if we can use low band facilities uh, uh, to make them able to do whatever registration they need to do. And of course, the second one is develop a massive uh, marketing strategy, socialization strategy to make people understand actually, hey, we, we can still have this kind of service even though we, we cannot go outside our house, for example, because of the uh, limitation because of the pandemic. So this kind of things that actually we've been doing so far, and then I think this is very good if we can replicate it into uh, all regions in Indonesia. So I think that's the Indonesian uh, example that I can share with. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, over to you, uh, Undersecretary Mapa. Thank you very much, uh, Philip. Uh, two points uh, that I'd like to add. The first one is, of course, the uh, linkage of the uh, ICT system uh, from the local uh, level uh, the local government units where the data uh, civil registration data emanates uh, to national agencies like the National Statistics Office, the Philippine Statistics Authority in particular, that the uh, reports this uh, uh, vital statistics. So the linkage of the of the system so that the uh, uh, reporting of the uh, raw data, the the events would be seamless. So that is very important. And of course, that would create the problem because in the case of the Philippines, we have about more than 1,650 uh, local government units. I think uh, uh, an important uh, intervention is uh, investment on this ICT uh, uh, information communication technology system uh, to the local government units to uh, minimize the inequality uh, of this uh, intervention. So we have to uh, really support uh, our local civil registrar in the case of the Philippines uh, to uh, upgrade uh, the use of technology in reporting vital events. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Are there further remarks on this question or shall we move along? A second question that occurred to me listening to the presentations has to do with how central coordination and collaboration are to the success of civil registration and vital statistics work. And all of you have highlighted how in the context of the pandemic, uh, it either fostered or strengthened the opportunities for that collaboration. I'd love to invite some reflection on your part about the importance of effective governance of CRVS systems to foster the kind of coordination and collaboration necessary to leave no one behind. Dr. Sumadi, would you like to start us off? Yes, uh, it is very fortunate that actually we had plan to have the uh, population census uh, in 2020. And it is actually our statistics office would like to go to the field to do the census. And then we understand that actually the work will be much better if we can use the CRVS data. So our administrative is used as the um, um, initial uh, uh, data set. And then we go to the field, check it out with the people. Yeah, and then we analyze it, we clean it up, and then we send it back to the uh, Civil Registry uh, uh, Central Command uh, at the Ministry of Home Affairs. In that way, our civil registration is much improved. The quality of the data, the information, so we can do that. That helps us in tracking the uh, uh, development situations because of the 
of the pandemic uh, 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 incidents here. So that's a good experience that I can share with. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for one or two other brief reflections before we invite our closing remarks. Dr. Tongtana, please, uh, please take the floor. Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I would like to share our ex experience in Laos uh, PDR regarding the CRVS uh, information. Actually, in Laos, CRVS belongs to the responsible of two ministries between Ministry of Health and Ministry of Home Affairs. Ministry of Health responsible, like we have developed system, like a district health information system to mm -hmm. register death and birth in hospital, of course, in hospital. As I mentioned in my uh, remark, that most of death and birth take place outside hospital. So the family books responsible by village, head of the village, uh, responsible by Ministry of Home Affairs. So both Ministry, we have to cooperate, to integrate, to have more clear information regarding this. That's our request for international stakeholders to support us in developing the one system that we can develop the CRVS together. Thank you. Thank you. And then briefly, I'd like to recognize Dr. Tudravu, followed by Under Secretary Mapa. And then we will invite our closing remarks. Thank you, uh, moderator. In our experience in Fiji, uh, collaboration through a whole of government approach was critical in the addressing uh, the needed response for COVID-19. So essentially, the whole of all of government um, agencies were involved in coming together and sharing resources, as well as sharing information, critical information, uh, that ensured that our response was uh, succinct and uh, attended to the needed um, actions on the ground. Um, not only the whole of government uh, response, but it is also a whole of society, very similar to the law of PDR um, experience. We, uh, as I've stated before, f more than 57% of our deaths occurred outside the hospital. And uh, it went up to 80% when you included the first 24 hours of admission into the hospital. So there was a large amount of information that we needed to get that was outside the scope of the formal sources of information. Therein lies the um, the success of the social, uh, the whole of society um, engagement in which we were able to get information that we needed for the registration, um, not only in births, but also um, in deaths. Thank you, uh, moderator. Thank you, sir. Uh, may I recognize, please, Under Secretary Mapa, and then briefly from uh, Commissioner Ryu. Uh, yes, uh, I absolutely agree with the importance of coordination during crisis. And uh, during crisis, uh, I think coordination through centralization is very important because different information sources can be better communicated and better coordinated through central authority. Uh, this is uh, my quick remark on your question. Thank you so much. And uh, Dr. Mapa, please. Thank you, uh, Philip. Uh, Reflections here, uh, three points I'd like to uh, to highlight. Uh, one, of course, the uh, pandemic uh, created opportunity uh, for uh, our uh, agency, the Philippine Statistics Authority, uh, to have an even stronger collaboration uh, between the agency and our local civil registrar, uh, those that are at the local government units that uh, uh, collects the information related to our CRBS system. This also provided us, this stronger collaboration provided us with uh, opportunity to uh, provide targeted capacity building intervention to our uh, local civil registrar. That's the first one. The second one is that uh, we have an interagency committee uh, on CRBS at the national level. And uh, this uh, uh, pandemic, uh, because there are issues that uh, will have to be addressed, uh, there is now a, a strong working relationship, an even stronger working relationship among the members of our uh, interagency committee. And the last one, uh, which is, I think, uh, a opportunity uh, for uh, future work related to CRBS. 
uh, we have uh, an integration. We are planning an integration of our uh, CRBS uh, uh, system into our national identification system, a national ID that is also being implemented by the Philippine Statistics Authority. So I think these are opportunities uh, that are uh, available and we are working with here uh, in, in the Philippines. Thank you very much. Thank you for such valuable comments to all our esteemed excellencies. I would now like to take the opportunity to invite one minute closing statements from each of you, starting with Dr. Chandra, that will take us just to the end of the hour. And we'll continue next section. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator. While the pandemic has been uh, devastating, it is also a great teacher and we stand to lose if we don't learn from these lessons. Digital information system and ICT are the way to go. Development partners can assist developing countries in transitioning from current paper-based information system to electronic systems that promote accuracy, security, reliability, and accessibility. In Fiji, digital health information systems on mobile platforms have been very useful uh, and assisted and assisted us, us when we needed to decentralize health services to multiple to multiple response sites in the wake of community transmission of the disease, as well as run population wide mass vaccination campaign for the COVID-19. Training and ongoing capacity building is critical in updating our practitioners in the developments and the new directions of response of response. We took great effort to train medical practitioners in differentiating COVID-19 related deaths from COVID-19 associated deaths, or simply deaths due to the virus and deaths with the virus, <coughs> as this was a challenge in the death certification process. Lastly, and we've uh, addressed this uh, point uh, prior, collaboration is important as exemplified by the challenge that we had in the registration of deaths in Fiji of foreigners and non-permit holders. Large-scale disasters like a global pandemic demand a multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholder approach. This approach needs to be part of the preparedness plan and will ensure the efficient use of resources and successes for our program. I thank you, moderator. Thank you so much for your participation in our panel, Dr. Tudravu. Dr. Sumadi, may I please ask your closing remarks? Thank you. We have heard examples, experience, realignment of strategies and innovation from our esteemed participants. And there are a lot of positive results as well as challenges we can learn from. With close collaboration with our international partners, in case of Indonesia, we have been working very closely with the government of Australia. We should be able to develop better strategies including capacity building strategies in CRVS promotion. We need to analyze and adjust these interventions to our local situation and in institutional condition. I believe with discussion like this facilitated by UNSCAP, thank you for the leadership of Ibu Armida Ali Shabana, we will be able to provide better CRVS, CRVS services to our people. Thank you, Mr. Seto. Thank you so much, Dr. Sumadi. May I please now invite Honorable Deputy Minister, uh, uh, sorry, Commissioner Ryu, please, to share your closing remarks with us. Thank you, Dr. Settel, for moderating this session very smoothly. Today's session was truly meaningful. We were able to share wide-ranging ideas and insights on CLVS. This pandemic indeed wreaked havoc on us, but also made us realize the need for and importance of CLVS system. A well-established CLB system plays an extremely essential role in identifying the impact of a crisis on demographic changes. There are prerequisites to be met, however, and these include the development of ICT equipment and infrastructure, inter-organizational cooperation and data sharing, an institutional framework, and well-trained staffs. Korea has accumulated its own experience and know-how on CLVS over the years, and will commit to sharing this knowledge with the global community. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Commissioner Ryu. Thank you for your participation today. 
Now I would like to invite Deputy Minister Thong Sana from Lao PDR to share closing remarks. Thank you, Mr. Sitter. Thank you for giving opportunity to share, to have a closing remark. I hope that uh, the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, has consumed our resources, remote resources. But we have dedicated our effort to overcome the situation, not only in Laos, in, in other countries. Uh, regarding CRVS, we have assumed that we need significant strengthening in our country. So the collaboration between Ministry of Health uh, through provincial, district, and local level, and Ministry of Home Affairs, we have to integrate it effort to strengthen the capacity for the CRVS uh, activities. So for this issue, I also request the international partner and development partner to support us in this endeavor. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Longsana. And uh, to wrap us up, please, uh, your remarks uh, respected Under Secretary Mapa. Thank you. The COVID-19 pandemic has greatly impacted the existing CRBS mechanism of the national statistics offices. Notwithstanding the prevailing constraint, we must strive to achieve our vision for this CRBS decade to have universal and responsive CRBS system facilitating the realization of all people's rights and supporting good governance, health and development. Having this goal in mind, innovations and enhancements are done to make our services accessible and affordable to users. IT enabled and digital CRBS has been the call of time with transactions starting to go online. This helped broaden our reach and provided a secure alternative in this time of the pandemic. Learning from others best practices has also been a proven approach to overcome the unique challenges to complement and supplement our system. Thus, we cannot downplay the significance of cooperation at the international and local levels. A CRBS is pandemic sensitive, long term and a whole of society approach in planning is necessary to caution CRBS in the future. Let us take this opportunity to renew our pledge and commitment to get everyone in the picture and leave no one behind. Thank you very much, Philip. Thank you so much, Under Secretary. And with those uh, very inspiring remarks, uh, let us thank the esteemed panelists, colleagues and friends for this remarkable roundtable session. This concludes our discussion. We've heard a tremendous set of contributions from a diverse set of countries presenting important views on the intersection of pandemics, people and preparedness. Let me take this opportunity finally to wish everyone a successful, productive, and as energizing a conference ahead as this roundtable has been, so that everyone everywhere gets in the picture. Thank you so much, and good day. <laughs>